Right. Uh, Mike here. <laughs> Another ejector video. Um, little update. Um, well, just a quick overview, in case anybody hasn't seen this thing before. Um, little research project uh, for my heat pump coming up this winter. Uh, it's a vapor compression system. Um, heat pump, technically. Uh, it's got a rotary compressor. Uh, refrigerant is uh, propane, propane barbecue grade, uh, HD5. Uh, we have a water cooled condenser and a little evaporative water cooler thingy going on outside. Um, we have a uh, air cooled evaporator, air warmed evaporator, whatever you want. Um, got a fan blowing on it right now. Uh, it's not an air conditioner. A lot of these parts did. A lot of the copper was uh, bent and brazed, and you know, I made my hand some components were bought online. Um, Anyway, this is an ejector system, so we actually have two stages of compression. Um, the uh, first primary stage is this device right here that I made. Uh, it's, I'm going to call it an ejector because um, it appears to be working, it appears to be functioning. And uh, it's able to achieve a pretty low uh, compression ratio. but. Um, Significant nonetheless, since uh, there's no moving parts other than the refrigerant itself. Um, I changed out my old gauge and put in this uh, glycerin filled gauge. Something has a little less flutter, a little finer needle. Um, a lot easier to read, I do like it. So we have uh, 54 PSI on our evaporator right now. Um, it's not very, very uh, warm out right now, but. Uh, We've done the last 62 pounds. Okay. So we got what, eight pounds, eight PSI that uh, this device here is actually pressurizing the, uh, the suction gas coming off of the evaporator. The, eva the um, gases produced by that are being compressed slightly using the pressure differential between the high and the low side. So uh, up here we actually have, uh, let's see, about 100 and 180 PSI, um, still rather warm, being injected in here into this injector. Uh, ejector. Um, the pressure uh, is converted into kinetic energy, velocity, whenever it exits through an orifice that um, goes down through this half-inch pipe and spits right into this throat, um, and that velocity that kinetic energy, uh, at least a portion of it, is given up to the suction gas that comes off of the evaporator. And the combination of those two mix and uh, end up in the separator column down here. Um, it has a sight glass. I don't know if you can see the uh, level. It's actually about right here right now. Um, so it should be about right here in the column. Um, and then the liquid that actually uh, is separated in the column comes off, goes through the gate valve, which is mostly closed right now, and feeds the evaporator. Now, um, what I was actually going to do tonight was change out some of these components here that connect the top of the evaporator to the ejector. And I was going to put a, um, an accumulator, kind of a spillover tank, um, because I find that the ejector doesn't like to get any liquid. Uh, it, uh, I, I, I kind of lose my pressure difference differential whenever that happens, so it only likes pretty much just pure vapor. Um, now I found that, um, oh, I'll say what I ended up doing was uh, saying screw it, I'm gonna change my pressure gauge. Um, I actually reoriented the, um, um, the sight glass was actually down here a little bit, so I put it on top. Um, hoping I'd get a little better temperature reading uh, with this thermocouple embedded that's floating right there in the pipe um, so that if I start to see liquid there, I can kind of close the uh, gate valve a little bit and uh, uh, ease it back a little bit, but any liquid that's actually still in the column, I can get a reading on it. What I'm going to do is put an accumulator and eventually it's going to have an embedded thermocouple like this that just floats or just sits in the, uh, the liquid at the bottom of that accumulator get a better temperature reading on it. Uh, now what I've found, um, just pulling around with it a little bit here tonight, is um, 
the ejector, I get the largest pressure differential. I've seen as high as 10 psi. 10 psi is pretty difficult to uh, to achieve, um, but I've gotten um, usually it's around six to eight. Eight's very very common. Um, getting anywhere above that is, is quite difficult. Now, um, something of note here. Um, so discharge pressure or temperature off the compressor. Uh, the second one here is this here in the accumulator, so that's medium pressure, uh, medium temperature as well. Um, the third one is the coming off of the evaporator, so that's our low pressure. Yeah, you can see how warm it is right now. There's a lot of superheat. And the final one there is the uh, suction taken right before the, uh, the compressor. Uh, so where is it? <laughs> Here it is. Looking at the video, um, that's going right back to the compressor. Now, I think it really is um, curious to note that even though uh, getting an obscene amount of superheat off the evaporator, it's not going a lot of cooling right now. Um, still picking up a fair amount of heat, I suppose, but um, that is being mixed with the uh, high pressure refrigerant coming through the orifice of the ejector, and what actually is going back to the compressor. Still very um, uh, low temperature, um, damn near saturated vapor. Um, and overall, that should be good for uh, the efficiency of the, assist of the system and the COP. Um, uh, although I don't want to run this thing with you know, excessive amounts of superheat because um, it's just not an effective use of the, uh, the surface area of the, the coil. The amount of heat that I can pick up, you know, for a heat pump application, um, it, it doesn't make sense to do that. However, it is, um, you know, notable and uh, 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 I think a good feature of a system like this that you can have some superheat and um, it, with some kind of refrigerant control, say a TXP that was installed in, in you know, to replace this gate valve, uh, I could, uh, you know, the ball valve. Um, you know, install a uh, sensing bulb, you know, in a lineup here, um, or maybe on a tank like this, uh, like a spillover tank, that could uh, regulate the amount of refrigerant going through that coil, and even if um, it didn't work all that particularly well and I get a fair amount of superheat, um, it's not necessarily going to adversely affect the uh, isentropic compression of the, uh, the compressor there. Something else I've noticed, um, the uh, ejector, this column here, this half-inch pipe that extends, actually continues on down through about the there. Um, I didn't know exactly where I was going to keep the liquid level in here. Um, my reasoning for that had to do with, uh, I didn't necessarily want to just spit it right here because this is where I decided to pull my suction vapors off. I wanted it high in the column. Uh, try to avoid any um, uh, violent ebullition uh, that it could, you know, suck a lot of uh, uh, liquid back. You know, for obvious reasons, the separator part, and I want to just pull vapor back. So I decided to bring it down a little bit closer to where I kind of figured the liquid level might be. Um, and I'm glad I did that because, uh, you know, I've learned, and it's kind of common sense, it makes a lot of sense, that if I allow the liquid level in this column to rise too much, it actually rises above the end of the half-inch pipe, it impedes the uh, the flow through the injector, the ejector, um, because now it's bubbling and pushing through the liquid, and the tone changes dramatically whenever uh, I allow that to happen, and it also adversely affects my uh, pressure differential uh, between my uh, low, so mo lo low pressure and my medium pressure uh, system there. So, um, here in the near future, I'm going to um, be including some kind of accumulator here after the evaporator, uh, so I can you know, pick up more uh, uh, more of the vapor is produced, uh, more of the heat that's been drawn back is, is, is latent heat, um, latent heat of vaporization, and not super heat. Um, maybe get a little bit better temperature reading. I'll probably just eliminate this section here with the thermocouple and with the pressure gauge, and just install all that into the accumulator. Um, Something else I want to do is uh, install some kind of a liquid receiver on the high side. Uh, something small, not the big monstrosity uh, tank I've had in the past. 
Um, I'm going to change out my filter dryer because I think it's probably plugged a little bit. I get some pressure drop, I, I believe, across that. Um, need to improve my uh, cooling method over there. Um, maybe swap out this entire condenser for something else. Um, and, um, you know, after a few different uh, modifications and then recharges and some tests, um, I am going to eventually change out the, uh, the orifice down in here. Um, probably going to go for something a little bit smaller. Uh, hopefully I can get something that I can really adjust uh, the, the depth of the uh, primary nozzle down in there. Uh, these ferrules and these compression fittings tend to set themselves into the copper pipe. So anyway, um, I'll, I'll leave it there for now. Um, made a few other observations, but uh, I'll keep that for a future video as I uh, as I make them. So thanks for watching.